Hey y'all, hope all is well. So, um, sorry for my previous video. So, hope everyone's doing well. I just wanted to, I felt inspired to do a video um, talking about me and, you know, some things that uh, I've dealt with mentally, um, you know, in the hopes that it'll empower you all to, you know, really, you know, um, really heal um, and to, you know, really make your mental health a priority. Um, I know with everything that's going on, um, you know, a lot of people are, you know, experiencing some really, you know, it's, it's difficult um, with this whole COVID-19 pandemic, you know, and we don't have to get all, I don't have to get all, we don't have to get all deep into, you know, uh, what my thoughts are about it. Um, because the reality is, is that, you know, 22 million people, 22 million people are unemployed. Um, a lot of people are shut down, you know, they're stuck in the house, they're socially isolated, you know, they haven't been around friends and family, um, so a lot of those social connections are um, disrupted. Um, a lot of people are depressed. Um, you know, I've seen some posts where people are talking about, you know, I just want to, you know, commit suicide, or, you know, I saw a story about this doctor who, uh, who was working um, in one of the hospitals in New York dealing with COVID-19 patients, and she committed suicide, you know. So, you know, I, I know, you know, we live in a very, um, you know, um, a, a very traumatized society. A lot of us deal with a lot of trauma. Um, some of us are actually dealing with traumatic stress, PTSD, um, from some of the things that we have experienced. So, you know, situations like this, and kind of having things disrupted can really, you know, be a trigger for people. Um, and, you know, and scientists do, and many, you know, health experts do, you know, anticipate that there is going to be a mental health, cri a mental health crisis as a result of COVID-19. Um, you know, and the shutdowns and the social distancing, you know, because a lot of people, you know, I mean, it's just not, it's not something that, you know, I mean, you know, we humans are social animals. Um, you know, and we thrive off a of connection, you know, having real close bonds with, you know, with, loved ones and family members and friends and when those bonds are just broken like that you know that can really um and people are sitting inside and not getting sunlight and you know they're not walking or you know exercising and they're just sitting around eating junk food or you know and again i'm not beating up anybody for you know any of their coping or whatever they do but you know but just that's just the reality that if we're in the house and we're eating junk food and drinking and drugs and for a lot of people you know it's just it's going to hurt them um, and, you know, and for me, you know, someone who kind of questions and maybe is less trusting of the official narrative and stories about COVID, it's been difficult for me because, you know, I do, you know, I do, um, you know, oftentimes I deal with OCD. Um, you know, it's something that I've had now for, um, several years. Now, I, you know, I have been in treatment for it and I know how to handle it and to manage it, but, you know, I, you know, I get triggered as well too. So I'm definitely sympathetic and empathetic for people out there who are just, you know, right now it's just a tough time for them, you know, mentally and you know, emotionally and, you know, dealing with a lot of anxiety and stress. Um, and, you know, for me, I wanted to talk about my particular type of OCD that I've dealt with, you know, because like I said, I've, I've had it in many different aspects now for almost 10 years, um, you know, and I will kind of elucidate on, you know, some of the more on the specific type of OCD that I've dealt with, you know, in, in a later video. But I wanted to kind of do something, you know, because I've been meaning to really, to, you know, just kind of share. And hopefully, you know, information I'll share and some of the tools I'll share will empower you to, you know, help with your anxiety or maybe your OCD or your PTSD or whatever it is you're dealing with. Um, because I will definitely share some therapeutic tools. So the first thing is, is that, um, what is OCD? A lot of people, you know, like, you know, what is it? You know, because a lot of people, there's a lot of like, kind of like, it's, it's really misunderstood, you know, in, in many different respects. Um, but, you know, just some kind of uh, baseline facts about it. So, according to the World Health Organization, OCD um, is one of the top 10 uh, debilitating conditions that a person can experience. So, people who have OCD, you know, which is defined as obsessive compulsive disorder, it can be, or it's a real thing, and it's a real life debilitating thing. It's not just people maybe who like, you know, they feel like they, you know, they, they, you know, they just, you know, some people, you know, kind of like they want to wash their hands a lot. That's, that's not it. 
you know, with OCD, you know, because that's one, one particular type of OCD, you can have OCD about a myriad of things. Um, you can have OCD about sleep, about, you know, sexual obsessions. You could be have pedophilia OCD, uh, violent obsession OCD. I mean, you know, the sky's the limit when it comes to OCD. It can latch on to anything. But it is a real thing. Um, it is a mental illness. Um, and it can really, you know, destroy people's lives. You know, um, it, you know it definitely was um, destroying mine, um, you know, for several years. Um, it destroyed some relationships. Um, it made me less of who I was, um, you know, and, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I've, I've just dealt with, you know, and I kind of dealt with, um, in the dark and didn't really get help for it. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a real thing, you know, and I know for, you know, a lot of, you know, particularly for black people, you know, oftentimes it's, it's a misunderstood thing and. Forgive me, y'all. I'm getting a little emotional because, you know, I'm sharing something that's really intimate um, in my life. But for a lot of black folks, you know, it's oftentimes something that's misdiagnosed. Um, you know, we're oftentimes, you know, because, of course, you know, you know, as with, as we're learning with COVID-19 and oftentimes, you know, there's a lot of medical racism. And, there's you know, as far as the way black folks are treated um, medically, um, you know, for physical ailments that they have, whether it be diabetes, high blood pressure, Whatever it is, you know, they're not given the quality care. It just, it's not out there. But also that exists for mental health, for mental health, mental health as well, too. Um, you know, uh, you know, black boys are, you know, routinely given uh, really dangerous uh, ADHD, ADHD drugs. Um, you know, black folks might have complained of PTSD. You know, they're not given the proper care in the VA or whatever other kind of mental health facilities. You know, they're just given these really dangerous medications, experimental medications. You know, um, if you read the book Medical Apartheid, it talks about how, um, uh, about how, uh, about essentially how, like, you know, a long time ago, like, you know, black boys who were labeled problem, problem child, problem children, oftentimes they had their brains cut out. Um, so, you know, and there's a really good documentary that talks about um, all this, you know, it's, um, I think, Psychiatry, the Industry of Death. Which talks about how, you know, basically for black folks living in America, you know, we've dealt with 400 years of trauma. And that trauma has affected us. You know, it's affected our genes. It's affected us. Um, and, you know, and there are certain, you know, traumatic conditions that we deal with. Um, and, you know, and our mental health has definitely been harmed as a result of all the, uh, the enslavement, Jim Crow, segregation, lynchings, rapes, mass murders, mass incarceration. You know, just, just non-stop, you know, un endless trauma. Um, so, you know, for a lot of us, you know, when we're dealing with these, you know, PTSD, OCD, whatever it is we're dealing with, oftentimes, you know, we go to the doctor and, you know, oh, you'll be okay. Here's some medication. Get the fuck up out of here. You know, oh, well, you know, okay, we well, you know, well, you know, that's not a real thing. You know, okay, you're just making it up, you know, whatever. But, you know, I've, I've talked to people, and like I said, and, you know, for many people, their OCD leads them down a very dark hole. Um, it leads them to suicide. It leads them to, you know, it pretty much destroys their entire lives. Um, and for me, you know, it definitely has, you know, harmed my life. Um, and I, you know, you know, I've always been a person who's kind of sucked it up and tried to play like everything was cool. But deep down inside, you know, I was dealing with a real legitimate, you know, problem, you know, that I didn't really, really like understand the, the, the depths of it until like I really, you know, got therapy recently. Um... So, anywho, but OCD um, means obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, essentially, how it shows up, you know, generally speaking, is that you have intrusive thoughts. And, you know, it can affect anybody. You know, it can affect people of all walks of life, you know, regardless of age, sex, you know, quote-unquote race, creed. It can affect anybody. How it shows up is that you have intrusive thoughts. You know, um, you, know you may have intrusive thought like, you know, I'm going to die, or I want to kill myself, or I want to kill my wife, or I'm going to burn the house down. Oh my God, I'm in the bathroom. Am I going to die from the germs? It could be a myriad of things. You can have OCD about anything. You know, I, you know, I could be gay. You could have, you know, I'm a pedophile. You know, you could be, you, you could have OCD about anything. It starts with the intrusive thoughts. And the intrusive thoughts trigger distress. And then the, the distress leads to you engaging in compulsions and or rituals. Now, um, you know, um, with people who have OCD, 
basically, you know, they latch on to those thoughts. Like a normal person, you know, a person who maybe is, you know, who's quote unquote normal, and I don't like to use that phrase, you know, but doesn't have OCD. They may have a thought like, oh yeah, you know, I want to, you know, kill my, you know, kill my husband or kill my, whatever. I'm gonna kill my, you know, but they're not gonna latch on to that thought. But a person who suffers from OCD, they latch on to that thought. And the thought scares them, you know, because they love their child. You know, that's their only child and they're very nurturing and loving and sweet. But they're having these like, you know, these thoughts like about killing their child or doing something like to a loved one that they really, you know, love and nurture and, and cherish. So it scares them. So then that leads to them engaging in what's known as compulsions. And the compulsions essentially are anything that the person does to try to minimize their anxiety. So it could be if you have contamination OCD, you may try to, you know, you obsessively, obsessively wash your hands a lot. Um, um, you know, you just, you, you have to wash your hands. Like, you know, if you're out somewhere, you, you touch something, you may, you, know, you have to wash your hands. And yeah, I mean, there are people out there who literally, I mean, they cannot function um, because they're, they're in a the shower like for hours uh, in a day. Uh, and with all, with all this COVID stuff going on, I mean, as it's being magnified for people who really suffer from, you know, from that, that particular type of OCD and that, that particular type of condition. You know, literally, they're, they're in the shower for like three or four hours. Um, and they just cannot function. They cannot go outside. They cannot do anything. Um, so that, that would be like a compulsion or, you know, an example of compulsion, like, you know, excessive hand washing. Um, and again, I mean, it's not just, you know, people oftentimes, you know, people oftentimes may do that. They may be doing it now. Um, because of, you know, some of the recommendations by the CDC. Um, but with, when you have OCD, it's, it's just, you know, it's not just the hand washing, it's the thoughts, you know, may have certain rituals. And I mean, it just, it affects your entire life. You know, it's like, it's one thing to wash your hands, maybe like, you know, three or four times a day, or maybe a little bit extra now. But with people with OCD, they're like washing their hands, like every single time they touch, they touch anything. So it, it, it's, it's a really debilitating condition. Um, people oftentimes when it's left untreated. Um, and for some people, like I said, because it's not really well understood, particularly in the medical field and in the, you know, in some respects in the mental health field, particularly, particularly amongst blacks, then, you know, something that people deal with for years and don't get any treatment for it. So, um, yeah, so, so essentially you have the, the compulsions, uh, and then the compulsions, oftentimes you have also, you know, in the compulsions, you have certain rituals. So, you know, ritual may be for a certain person that, um, you know, if they have maybe a violent obsession, like they have to like, if they go to bed with their wife or their loved one or someone that, you know, they're having these violent obsessions, obsessive thought, intrusive thoughts about that they want to harm them, then they have to like make sure there's no sharp objects around, you know, they have to do all this kind of like, um, you know, on the surface kind of like weird things, um, you know, to, in order to be around their loved one. Um, and if they don't, like, they get really, like, afraid and frantic and, you know, it just kind of, like, it just totally throws them off and they can't even be around their loved one, um, in that situation. So, um, so essentially you have the obsessions, the thoughts, and that leads to, to the compulsions. And with people with OCD, it's like a rabbit hole. Like, it's like a cycle. It's like a cycle of distress, you know, and some people, they can lead, it's a cycle of death, you know, because it leads them to commit suicide, um, to self-harm you know, to do other things that are really, like, extraordinarily, extraordinarily destructive. Um, it's like a rabbit hole. Like, basically, you're just constantly doing these things, and, you know, you're doing the compulsions, you're having the thoughts, you know, you know, thoughts don't go away, so you engage in more compulsions, so it's like a cycle, you know, um, and it can really, like, it can really kind of break you down. Um, you know, it's, it, you know, in some respects, I think it's broken me down. Um, you know, I'm kind of more aware of that now, of the ways that it's affected me mentally, and, and you know, particularly with some of my relationships. Um, but yeah, so it's a cycle. So in my own situation, uh, my particular type of OCD was sleep OCD. So for about a year, you know, cause like I said, I've been dealing with OCD for about, you know, almost nine years and, you know, and again, I mean, I've been dealing with it, but it just kind of like, it's one of those things where it was like one of my dark secrets. It was one of those things I just kind of had, you know, and I, I, and I still with like nonstop anxiety, you know, literally anxiety when I wake up to like when I go to bed, you know, nonstop anxiety. I would take no medication, no CBD oil. I wouldn't do anything. I'll meditate. Um, but, you know, I'll do like some EFT every now and then. But, you know, and some, you know, I tried some other different things to try to minimize my anxiety. But it's something I just dealt with, um, you know, and I never really, I don't know. I just kind of, I think I was in a space where I didn't, you know, value myself as much. Um, you know, cause I have, you know, dealt with low self-esteem and, you know, um, so I didn't value myself and, 
oftentimes that could be a people pleaser. So people who don't buy themselves and people pleasing kind of low self-esteem are kind of like they say that one of the hallmarks of having low self-esteem is being a people pleaser. And when you're a people pleaser, you're so focused on other people's needs that you, you neglect your own. And, you know, for a large part of my life, I've dealt with severe self-neglect where I just, I, you know, I had these issues or problems, you know, that I just did not get help for, for, you know, um, cause I didn't feel like I was worth it. So, um, yeah, I just kind of dealt with it, you know, but it kind of came to a head, you know, cause you know, I've always valued sleep, you know, I love sleeping, you know, sleeping is important. It's important for your health, for your, you know, just, and I know we live in a culture that doesn't value sleep, you know, people have all types of insomnia. Um, and I will talk about that because sleep OCD is different from insomnia, but you know, because it's not really, I mean, cause I never heard of sleep OCD. I've heard of insomnia. Um, it's something that kind of like, you know, if you have sleep OCD, you know, doing things for kind of like doing standard things like maybe cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia is not going to help you. And I'm going to talk about my experience with that. It's not going to help you. What's it'll make it worse. So I remember around this time last year, you know, cause you know, I would have like a lot of intrusive thoughts and I started having intrusive thoughts like, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to get any sleep. And, you know, and I really latched on to that because, you know, um, you know, I'm, you know, I have a small business and, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm a very active person. You know, I do a lot. Um, I'm learning to kind of, you know, relax more and kind of fall back and do less. But I'm, a, I'm you know, I'm, a, I'm an active person. You know, I have a lot of energy, you know, um, you know, I, I do a lot of things. You know, I'm learning to kind of do less and to kind of take care of myself and um, kind of put me first and do things that were really different for me. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm a person that's used to like kind of doing a lot of shit. So, um, yeah. So like, you know, so, you know, those thoughts really scare me. So I'm like, oh my God, you know, you know, like, you know, you know, so I would try to like block those thoughts out as most people do when they have OCD, they try to block the thoughts out. They try to avoid the intrusive thoughts. Um, that's one of the coping strategies that people oftentimes use when, you know, when they, you know, are not in treatment for OCD. Um, so I tried to block the thoughts out. I was like, okay, you know, I'm just going to, you know, so. But, you know, that didn't work, you know, because I remember, like, there was, like, a night last year, literally, like, I was having these nonstop intrusive thoughts and all this anxiety before I was about to go to sleep, which, again, was, like, totally new for me. I've never experienced something like this before. So, um, you know, um, so literally, like, I could not fall asleep. I was just up. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, I mean, because, I mean, I think when I started dealing with OCD around 2010, I'd wake up in the middle of the night, you know, but then I'd eventually go back to sleep. I'd watch, like, The Cosmos by Carl Sagan or... You know, some like type of like kind of like soothing, like Netflix series, some shit like that. And I'll eventually go back to sleep. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, but I mean, but it, you know, but I never had sleep problems until I actually had OCD in 2010. So, um, you know, but then I remember like one time, like I just, I could not fall asleep. And literally I was up like from like 11 to like 8. And my anxiety was like on like 130. You know, I was just like. What you know? What I mean, I don't know what's going on. So I'm like, okay. I immediately kind of went into, you know, I was having intrusive thoughts. You know, um, my OCD had kind of jumped to another subject. Which again, we have OCD. You know, you may have it about germs, but it can jump to anything. You may start having OCD about, you know, um, you know, um, you know that you're a pedophile. I mean, it could. You, I mean, you could have OCD about anything, and it can jump to anything. It can latch on to anything. So um, it can latch on to finances, what have you. So um, my OCD latched on to sleep. And, you know, and so, okay, you know, I got to start, you know, all right, I'm dealing with insomnia, okay, because that's what my thought was. And at the time, I was actually, you know, kind of seeking out treatment for my, for my OCD I've been kind of dealing with for years now. And my therapist at the time recommended that I, you know, because she was an insomnia therapist, you know, because oftentimes people who work with OCD patients, oftentimes they do work with insomnia as well, too. You know, because like I said, insomnia is oftentimes anxiety related. So it kind of oftentimes falls along the, the the, the, the spectrum of dealing with, <clears throat> excuse me, anxiety disorders. <clears throat> you know, they oftentimes may work with PTSD as well, too. So she was like, okay, well, um, check out this app called the CBTI for insomnia, um, which is a great app. You know, so people out there right now who are dealing with insomnia, you're dealing with, you know, um, just anxiety from all the COVID and you might have lost your job or you're dealing with a lot of stress. I definitely recommend, I mean, you know, I definitely recommend with a caveat the, the app is called CBTI. Um, it's a great app, you know, if you're dealing with kind of like just insomnia overall. Um, but I say all that to say is that if you have intrusive thoughts about your ability to not sleep, if you have like what's known as sleep dread, or you like have a lot, a lot of intrusive thoughts about, um, <clears throat> you know, you're afraid that you're not gonna be able to get any sleep, or you're gonna wake up in the middle of the night, 
or you're going to die in your sleep or, you know, you're going to die from a lack of sleep or like if you're having intrusive thoughts about sleep, then do not use that app. It will not be helpful for you. You know, you need to like, like seek out a, a really qualified um, therapist, the ERP therapist who can help you, you know, deal with that particular type of OCD. Uh, because, you know, like I said, but now if you have like, just kind of like dealing with some stress or, you know, some difficulty sleeping, then that insomnia app would be really helpful for you. Um, and there's millions of Americans who deal with insomnia, you know, they're taking sleeping pills and all these other different types of things, you know, and I'll talk about my experience with that. So at first, um, you know, I was just dealing with, you know, like, you know, I, I, was, I was up. So I'm like, oh my God, you know, I've never experienced that before. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? You know, it's, this is really kind of like, it scared, it scared the fuck out of me, you know, but, and, and part of the reason why it was so scary for me is, is because, uh, okay, you know, I have a job where I drive a lot. So, you know, I'm constantly moving, like I'm on the road, I'm on the highways, you know, and I live in the Atlanta area. Um, and, you know, Atlanta, you know, a lot of gridlock traffic, you know, fucking trucks everywhere, 285 motherfuckers flying down the road and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it, it's, you know, I mean, you know, it, you know, it's, you know, ain't no public transit in Atlanta, you know, so you got, you know, you got to have a vehicle to kind of, you know, to navigate the city and to, and particularly if you have a construction business, you have to constantly meet with clients. So... I start developing another fear, you know, it's kind of t it's tied into my death OCD, which is something that I, I've struggled with for close to about two years, along with suicide OCD as well, too. Um, I, I, you know, so I started latching on to like, oh my God, because I didn't get any sleep, I'm gonna get into a car accident and die. You know, I'm gonna fall asleep at the wheel, which, you know, you know, thousands of Americans every single year, you know, literally die, um, you know, because they fall asleep behind the wheel. You know, drowsy driving, as, as, as was known. You know, it's more dangerous than drunk driving. Uh, just as dangerous as texting and driving. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a real thing. So, I mean, and that's happened to me before. You know, I've had twice in my, in my life where I just, I was, like, super tired. I just fell asleep at the wheel. And one time, like, I literally, like, crashed onto, like, um, one of those median walls or whatever. And it busted my tire. And, yeah, it scared the shit out of me. Like, I was, I was, I was, I was powered i was scared i mean it was very frightening it happened to me often oftentimes another time when i was in my 20s both times happens in my 20s it happened another time when i was like going down to miami for spring break when i was you know back at hampton um so yeah so like my brain really that's on to that so then like okay so then i became afraid to drive anywhere so i stopped driving so you see you see you see how the you see you see, you see the trans you know you see the um the um the tr you know uh, the, the transgression on whatever the um, uh, I can't find the word. Whatever, the, um, you know, the, um, basically the line. So I start to have intrusive thoughts. Okay, I'm not going to be able to get any sleep. Those thoughts cause a lot of distress. And then, you know, I was unable to actually get any sleep because of all the anxiety, the distress. Um, you know, um, yeah, I wasn't, be able to, I wasn't able to get any sleep. And then because of that, you know, um, I was up all night. And then I became afraid to, like, go anywhere, drive anywhere. So... So then, um, and that's, and that's when I stopped driving. So that's, and so basically I had the intrusive thoughts and then those caused the distress. And then the compulsion for me was not driving. So literally like there was points last year, like where I was like, I was taking Uber everywhere. I was taking Mart everywhere because I was literally like, like petrified to drive. Like I was just totally afraid to go anywhere. Like I would walk, but like, as far as driving, like I remember one time, you know, and, um, you know, God bless my father. Um, you know, I love him. And, you know, um, when you deal with OCD, you know, um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's a difficult thing. It's a difficult thing. And if you don't have supportive people in your life who can really love you and encourage you and, um, you know, who can um, just love you unconditionally and, and, you know, and support you as you're dealing with this, you know, it can make it damn near impossible for recovery, you know, but I remember my father, you know, he was like, you know, cause I had to go to Forsyth County, you know, that's a, that's a sundown area too, you know, black folks, we don't go to Forsyth County, but I had to go there and meet with a client and he drove me, you know, cause I took the martyr train and he drove me, you know, and I really appreciate it. Cause I was like, you know, you know, I'm scared. I'm, you know, I was just totally petrified. Um, and also my wife, you know, she was a tremendous blessing. You know, I couldn't, you know, you know, she helped me out so much. Um, you know, she's probably the reason why I mean, I even made this video today because she sent me an article about exposure therapy and that kind of, you know, because I could be a bit of a slow learner. You know, I, I, you know, I know I may know shit in my head, but I'm like, eh, 
you know, I, I'm a, you know, I, I, I inch towards that motherfucker. Like I'm not moving, you know, once I'm in, I'm in, like I'm running, but you know, but, you know, once I see it, I'm like, eh, you know, I'm analyzing it and I'm, you know, I'm breaking it down, you know, I'm trying to figure it out and whatever. So I, I kind of be a slow mover when it comes to, you know, things that, you know, can be really beneficial or helpful for me. So, um, yeah, so, um, you know, I remember like I was just, I, you know, I wasn't driving nowhere. And then, um, you know, um, you know, or, or I would live in my driving like to like days I got sleep, you know, because I mean, sleep became like something that like, you know, I used to dread, I used to dread every night, like, you know, bedtime. I used to dread it, you know, um, um, you know, so I, I became like, you know, I became even more obsessive. I, you know, I started latching on to all these different compulsions and doing yoga and doing this and walking and meditation, EDMR and hypnotherapy and um you know i had about like 30 different compulsions i had a bunch of them you know and i eventually kind of settled into watching tv at night you know that became like my number one compulsion that you know helped me go to sleep um you know but like i said i mean you know but i was still dealing with ocd about other things you know i'll still be triggered and you know i mean you know yeah i mean i, I became like kind of like dependent upon you know, TV. So, like, for example, like, if I went out of town for my birthday, um, like, to vacation, like, you know, um, you know, I, you know, like, you know, I, you know, there had to be, like, some time, you know, there wasn't TV around, so, you know, for whatever reason, and, like, I would get all afraid. So, you know, I knew it was kind of like, okay, this is not really healthy. So, um, yeah, so, I eventually, um, you know, because I, I found a therapist at first, um, and, and things didn't work out, so, um, you know, um, I found another, like, you know, really good black therapist, you know, who does ERP. So, essentially, when you have, o when you have OCD, um, the gold standard treatment is what's known as exposure therapy or exposure ritual prevention therapy. It, it's the gold standard. Um, it's the most effective treatment out there. It's also effective for, excuse me, burping. It's also effective for um, PTSD for like just kind of like generalized anxiety disorder. Um, it's effective for a wide range of like anxiety based disorders. Um, you know, so something that you all may want to check out, you know, um, people who maybe deal with a lot of anxiety now or dealt with it in the past. Like for me, I've always had a lot of anxiety. Like, you know, I had ADHD Well, you know, I used to deal with a lot of ADHD. Um, and ADHD essentially is, is really an anxiety disorder. Um, you know, it's, you know, people, you know, the hyperactivity is really kind of a manifestation of heightened anxiety. And for me, you know, I've always had a lot of anxiety about a lot of different shit. You know, just everything. Performance anxiety, anxiety about this, you know, fear of rejection, you know, anxiety, 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 anxiety. It's like, you know, that was my middle name was anxiety. I was always nervous about something. Something always made me anxious. You know, and, um, you know, for a lot of people who have addictions, you know, because I know people, you know, they have addictions, you know, that's oftentimes the way that we kind of self-soothe, you know, is, you know, um, you know in, in addiction really... Is our way of kind of, is our way of, of dealing with the problem. You know, it, it may not be a productive way, but, you know, it, it, it makes perfect sense. When you look at it on the surface, you know, when you take out all the judgment and the shame, okay, you have anxiety, okay, so you smoke cigarettes, or you drink alcohol, or you smoke a lot of weed, or you take drugs, or you do hair, whatever, you know, you shop, whatever the addiction is. I mean, cause you can be addicted to anything. It's not just to, like, actual substances. You can be addicted to the internet. You could be addicted to Facebook. You could be addicted to Instagram. You could be addicted to shopping, sex. I mean, you know, but it's a way that you are trying to solve a problem. Um, you know, but so the issue is, is like, you know, essentially not why the addiction, but why the problem, you know, why the anxiety, you know, and if you go back, then, you know, a lot of our anxieties and, you know, are rooted in trauma that we experience as a child. Or an ancestral trauma, you know, because that, that is valid, you know. I think a lot of my anxiety probably comes from, you know, a lot of my ancestors and things that they, all the trauma they experienced from slavery to lynchings. Um, you know, I was watching a really good documentary by a friend of mine. Um, uh, you know, uh, what's the name of the film? Um, it, was a film about, it was a film about lynchings. Um, it, I think it was Always in Season. Uh, it's, it's on PBS called Always in Season. But it was talking about how, like, you know, lynchings, and this was a form of terrorism uh, that blacks experienced for almost, you know, you know, they're still experiencing to this day. Um, won't, you know, won't get too deep, deep into that, because I know the feds are watching. But anyways, but, um, you know, um, they're still experiencing to this day. And, you know, just the trauma, 
you know, and as I watched that film, you know, I watched it, you know, it just made me think about, and a lot of, a lot of things made sense about me and, you know, the way I was raised by parents and loved ones and, you know, oftentimes the way they treated me. Um, and, you know, and just being a, you know, quote unquote, black man in America and just all the things that we deal with. Um, you know, so, yeah. So, you know, the addiction is not the issue. It, you know, it's, it's, it's the, it's the trauma, it's the, it's the stress, it's the, um, it's the anxiety, whatever it is. So, so, um, yeah, so, you know, I found, I found a really good therapist, um, you know, around August, um, you know, and I learned about ERP and I was like, okay, you know, you know, all right, you know, and, and the whole premise of ERP is, is that you have to expose your things, expose yourself to things you're afraid of. So if you're afraid of you're not getting any sleep, then an exposure will be like you intentionally not getting any sleep. Now, of course, now you have to give up all the compulsions. So you have to give up all the melatonin. And, you know, so for me, I had to give up the doing the yoga at night, exercising at night, um, EDMR at night, meditation at night, showers at night, yoga at night, um, all these little different compulsions that I had. I had to give all that up. Um, because the idea, remember now, when you have OCD, it's like a cycle. You have the intrusive thoughts. The intrusive thoughts cause distress. And then you have, you know, that leads to you engaging in compulsions, which leads to more intrusive thoughts which leads to even more distress and leads to you doing, you know, more compulsions. And like I said, for a lot of people, it totally just destroys their lives. You know, people commit suicide. Um, you know, it, it takes them out, uh, you know, and, you know, and, trust, and as someone who's suffered with, who was dealt with it for years, I know the pain, you know, it's a pain that I wouldn't wish on anybody. Um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a mental, emotional pain, you know, and feeling like you're just totally helpless. Um, and, and that's how I felt last year. It was like, you know, when I wasn't able to get, when I was just up all night and I couldn't fall asleep, I felt totally helpless. You know, I felt like I just, you know, you know, life was over, you know, I mean, you know, cause I couldn't, you know, something as basic as sleeping, I couldn't do, you know, like I've been doing for years, you know, quite well. So, um, you know, and that sense of helplessness, you know, just leads people oftentimes, you know, it can lead them over the edge, you know, but thankfully I had you know, wife and friends and family and I love you all and thank you. If you're watching, thank you again for everything you did to support me. Um, I'll never forget it. Um, you know, friends from Hampton, man, you know, just so many people that have helped me in my journey towards recovery. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, so I learned about exposure therapy, you know, and the whole premise is that, okay, you have to kind of break the pattern. You have to break the pattern of, of the OCD. So you have to, you know, so... You know, you know, it's not about kind of blocking the thoughts out. No, but you have to kind of, you, you're still going to have the thoughts, but you can't engage in the compulsions or the rituals as a result of the distress or the thoughts. So you may have the intrusive thought like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to get any sleep. But, you know, you just kind of be present with that thought and you respond to it accordingly. You know what I'm saying? You know, through the exposure therapy. Um, you know, I might get all deep into, you know, what it is. I mean, you know, but essentially, you know, you respond to the thought, but then you intentionally like stop the compulsion. So, and, and the whole premise is that when you kind of break, break that pattern, then, you know, you're, you, you can begin to gain recovery, you know, um, you know, you, you know, you can essentially, you know, the anxiety will be lowered, um, you know, and by exposing yourself to things you're afraid of, then your brain will kind of habituate to it. So you realize that, you know, it's almost like the best analogy I can think of is that, you know, oftentimes, you know, it's, it's the whole premise of facing your fears, but in, in this case, you're doing it in a therapeutic manner. You're not doing it like, oh, okay, I'm just trying to face my fear or whatever. Like, you're doing it in a sense of like, okay, like, it's almost like, you know, the Wizard of Oz. Like, you know, like the whole Oz guy was really, or the whatever, the Oz person was really afraid, you know, really, really scary. So, you know, they went down, you know, they, they went down the Wizard of Oz, off to see the Wizard, wonderful Wizard of Oz, because, 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 whatever. So then, like, you know, but they're afraid the whole time. They have all these little things that are frightening the fuck out of them. And then... You know, and then they finally take off the mask of the eyes, and it's like this, like little kind of like it's nothing. It's like it doesn't even exist. That's the whole thing with like doing exposure therapy is that basically you're exposing yourself to something that you're really afraid of, like you know, something that may even give you an anxiety attack, something that may give you a panic attack, something that you really are just really frightened of. Like you just, you know, like that's like it's like a snake in the room. But you you face it. You know, again, I mean, with the help of a, a therapist, and I'm not telling you to do all this shit by yourself. With the help of a, of a professional, you face it and then you start to habituate to it. And you realize, okay, it's something that, you know, I don't have to, 
you know, I, you know, I, you know, okay, you know, whatever. It's, it's not, not something I really have to be afraid of. And you may still have the intrusive thoughts, but, um, you know, um, but yeah, but you don't have to give in to the compulsions of the rituals as a result of those thoughts or as a result of the distress or anxiety. Because when you have OCD, you have a lot of anxiety. And that's why one of the medications that oftentimes are subscribed are SSRI medications. But I wasn't taking that shit because I know that increased the risk of suicide. And, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't trust them psychiatric drugs. So oftentimes, you know, uh, you know I mean, you know, another good kind of alternative uh, for um, SSRI medications is CBD oil. And I did use that for a while. Um, you know, I think for me, oftentimes my anxiety scares me. So um, I used it for a while, but I stopped using it at the advice of my therapist because she said that, well, you know, basically pe people have OCD. Oftentimes they have an intolerance for anxiety. Like the anxiety scares them. Like they feel like, you know, just because they're, you know, they have anxiety, like something bad is going to happen. Like they just, they have an intolerance for it. Like they don't, they don't like it. It feels uncomfortable. They, they want to get rid of it. You know, um, which again is natural. I mean, you have, you know, millions of people around the world, you know, trying to soothe their anxiety. And they smoke, you know, they, they have certain addictions or they may smoke, they may drink, they may do whatever to soothe their anxiety. You know, um, whatever it is. So, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so, I, you know, I took it for a while and it kind of helped, you know, kind of damper the anxiety a little bit that I, I was experiencing. But again, when you're doing exposure therapy, the whole premise is, is that, number one, you want to kind of you know, start to accept your anxiety, you know, because I think for a lot of us, people particularly who deal with a lot of anxiety, it's like they're always trying to, like, get rid of it or soothe it or, you know, I mean, but I've learned, you know, since, since I've been in therapy and whatever, you know, because I've been, you know, I've been in therapy now since August, you know, and, you know, I'm not going as consistently as I was before, you know, um, you know, because I was really, really intensive therapy for a while. Um, but you know, I still have, like, I still talk to my therapist and we still chat and I share with her some of my struggles, you know, because when we have OCD, you know, oftentimes, you know, every day is something different, you know, it's like, you know, and that's just kind of how life goes, you know, you know, one day may be a good day, next day maybe kind of, you know, you may have, you may be dealing with some stresses that may trigger your OCD. So, um, yeah, so basically like, you know, you learn to be present with your anxiety, you know, to not push it away, to not get on the internet, to not you know, drink alcohol or smoke or whatever it is you do to soothe, but to just, okay, you know, just to be present with it, um, you know, um, and to kind of, and, and, to, and, to, and to respond to it in a more meaningful way, in a therapeutic way rather than, than a destructive way. So, um, yeah, so, you know, and like I said, I mean, because I dealt with sleep OCD for almost a year, you know, and like I said, I still have, you know, I still have certain compulsions because I had so many, you know, I had like 30 of them motherfuckers. Um, you know, so oftentimes I, sometimes I, I, like, you know, I engage in compulsions I don't even know about, you know, like, like for me, you know, from following and a lot of my compulsions came as a result of following that CBTI for insomnia app. Um, you know, which I say again, like if you have intrusive thoughts or you have sleep dread or you have all these kind of like, you know, things about sleep then you know, that's not gonna be beneficial for you. You need to see a therapist to help you, you know, kind of learn some exposure exercises to help with your sleep OCD. Um, so yeah, like, you know, you, you know, basically in that app, it's, you know, make the room quiet and make sure there's no noise. And yeah, so like if you sleep, sleep with somebody who snores then you know, you, you're going to be freaked out, you know, and not want to sleep with them or, you know, you, you have, you know, you're, you know, um, you know, if you're, um, you're sleeping in your house and one of the kitchen light is on, you know, you might freak out about that. And I, I'll freak out about shit like that. So like sleep, you know, sleep for me for the past year has been kind of like up and down. You know, I've had some good days. I've had some like bad days. Um, and it's because, you know, from knowing now, from me engaging in the, in the compulsions, um, you know, and giving up those compulsions was hard. Ooh, it was hard. You know, particularly like the whole sleep thing. I'm sorry, the whole TV thing, you know, because the TV is like, you know, because for a while I wasn't getting any sleep. So once I started watching TV, like I watched like Gabriel Mate, some, you know, some, you know, kind of like some kind of spiritual, whatever, you know, kind of self, you know, self-improvement type stuff, you know, about healing and trauma, what have you. Um, I watched that and man, I, you know, I was sleeping. I was good. I was Gucci, as they say. But then, you know, I had to give that up. And that was hard. You know what I'm saying? You know, I was like, man, I got to give that shit. You know, it was hard to give all that stuff up. But gradually, you know, because like I said, I mean, I, 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 you know, for a long time, I felt totally powerless. Because I'm like, man, why am I still having difficulty sleeping? What's going on? You know, and, you know, and now, like, you know, I'm able to see, like, okay, it was from me engaging in all these different compulsions. You know, because, yeah, I, you know, I'm going to have the intrusive thoughts. I still have them. 
you know, even the days like when I've had like great sleep, I have intrusive thoughts about sleep. But if I give into those compulsions, then my sleep is going to suffer. Um, so, you know, um, yeah. So, you know, um, but I just wanted to kind of share, you know, talk about me, um, my experience, you know, again, um, you know, mental health is something that, you know, it's something that, you know, it, it's kind of, and I mean, and, and a lot of it is, you know, it, it's, it's become a lot more prevalent now. People talking about it, uh, talking about their experiences, you know, and I mean, and, you know, and part of me on one end is, like, okay, this is great. You know, particularly when I see black folks talking about it and, you know, they talk about their mental health challenges I'm, like, as I'm talking about mine and, you know, cause yeah, sleep OCD. I mean, it was, it was a mental health issue. It was a mental illness that I had. You know, it was, it's not, it's not insomnia. I didn't have insomnia, but for the longest time I thought that I did, you know, and like I said, I mean, if you have insomnia, you know, Hey, check out that app, you know, it's a, it's a great app. Um, you know, it may, may, may you want to go to see, see a sleep specialist, you know, maybe see a, a, C, a CBT therapist, you know, because ERP is, 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 you know, CBT means cognitive behavioral therapy and ERP is kind of like, it's kind of like a subset of, of CBT, but, um, yeah, I didn't have, you know, I had thought I had, no, I didn't have, I had sleep OCD, it's two different things, it's two separate things, and there's one treatment for one, one treatment for one, another treatment for the other, um, but yeah, when you're doing sleep OCD, particularly for a person who's like, who's actually falls asleep at the wheel, and has like some trauma behind that, and some trauma behind doing all this different shit last year, and not getting relief, you know, it was like a real thing that really kind of like crippled me, because yeah, there were times like, I, I you know, I did, I did not leave the house, because I was so afraid, you know, I, I, I didn't get enough sleep. I didn't get enough sleep the previous night. So, um, yeah, um, just wanted to share my story. Um, again, you know, if, if for those of you who have, um, you know, have OCD, you know, you may not know it, you know, sometimes, you know, but a, a hallmark, a hallmark of it is having intrusive thoughts um, about anything, but, but what, about whatever the topic may be. Um, and if you do have it, maybe, you know, um, seek out some help, you know, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy, you know, you can send me a private message or post a comment below, and I'll be happy to share maybe some insight that I have, you know, because, you know, I, I got helped, you know, people oftentimes directed me towards the path that, you know, the, towards ERP and therapy, my wife did, and I had, you know, friends that helped me with that, so, you know, um, it is a real thing, and it could be a really debilitating thing, um, but, you know, I mean, you know, you know, Recovery is possible, you know, healing is possible, you know, relief is possible. Um, but just, you know, finding, finding the right people and the right tools to help you. Um, and that could be a process, that could be a process in and of itself as well, too. So, um, but yeah, um, you know, you may have it. And, you know, if you do, it's, it's not your fault. Um, that's one thing I had to kind of come to grips with is that nothing that I'm dealing with, you know, was my fault. I never chose, like, to have sleep OCD, have intrusive thoughts. It's something that... You know, um, I think I was, you know, I was kind of predisposed to it, maybe because of a trauma and some, you know, and me having anxiety a lot. And I've always had like a lot of intrusive thoughts about a lot of different shit, <laughs> even since I, even when I was little. Um, you know, I'll you know, just have thoughts like kind of like wild thoughts out of nowhere that, you know, whatever. So and I'll, I'll oftentimes, would, you know, suppress those thoughts or like try to push those thoughts away. Um, those quote unquote negative thoughts, if you will. And that's why I like the whole law of attraction, positive thinking shit. You know, that's, you know, if you have, you know, generally speaking, none of that shit helps you. That, that shit don't do you a goddamn worth of good. You know, positive thinking, you know, it's, you know, push, you know, suppressing your thoughts. I mean, that don't do anything. Suppression of anything is just horrible. You know, that's why a lot of people like in that whole new age kind of pseudo spiritual community, they, they, you know, they're fucked up mentally. You know, and I've been there, you know, cause I was a vegan too. And plus I was into that new, all that new age bullshit. You know, I was, man, I was... You know, I was I was really kind of like just totally disconnected from reality for for a long time. Um, so, but yeah, if you have you know OCD, you know it's okay. You know it's not your fault. Um, you know, and I encourage you to get help um, if you have any type of any type of anxiety you know disorder, whether it be generalized anxiety disorder, um, you know PTSD, whatever it is, um, it's not your fault. Um, and relief is out there. You know, um, I can refer you to people that I know personally, uh, and, um, particularly in times like this, when there's so much going on in the world, you know, you really have to kind of be really kind of even more kind of diligent with this shit. Like, you know, and really, okay, I really need to kind of, maybe I just need to get off Facebook and, 
You know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, you have to really, you have to really make your mental well being like even more. That's has, has to be even more of a priority. You know, because it's so easy to kind of get sucked into like the the binge eating and the drinking and the addict the addictive behaviors. It's so easy to get into that and the compulsions. If you have OCD, whatever it is. Um, but you know, now be a good time to kind of maybe you know, if you you know if you have the means and. And if you don't have the means, um, then maybe start kind of exploring, you know, things that you can do to improve your mental health. Um, and, you know, and again, you know, you know, maybe seeking out a good qualified therapist. And I'm not a therapist, you know, um, I'm just somebody who, you know, has suffered from OCD and, you know, and who has, you know, still deals with it. Um, probably going to deal with it the rest of my life and who's learned to, set, you know, success, successfully manage it. You know, and I have my slip ups and, you know, but it's not about perfection. It's just about kind of being consistent. So, um, yeah, I hope um, that this video inspires you all to um, maybe seek out that professional help and to maybe start, you know, maybe use this time not to be all, you know, spiritual. Oh, this is a pot, you know, but, you know, OK, you're home and, you know, you're not maybe use this time to kind of explore, you know, some of those, um, you know, you know, explore your anxieties or your, you know, whatever it is you're dealing with mentally, whether it be, you know, even a so-called so -called mental illness, to kind of explore that, you know, um, and to see, maybe seek out professional help, um, you know, particularly, you know, if you have the means to, to do that, um, you know, because now, you know, you're not home, you're not, you know, you know, running around, you know, being a wage slave and doing all this other dumb shit that, that we do under capitalism, so... You know, this is an opportunity to do those things and to explore, you know, you know why is it I always got to smoke or I got to drink or, you know, I mean, you know, just kind of explore yourself and get in tune with yourself um, and to, you know, make those things that kind of maybe, you know, you have neglected, you know, you know, um, you know, individually to kind of explore those things, particularly with something that's really kind of like harming your relationships and just harming your ability to function in the world. Um, and to kind of be 100% you authentically. So, um, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Um, I hope um, I hope this inspires somebody. Hope you are doing well. Um, again, you know, feel free because, you know, I plan on making more OCD videos, talking about more of my experience. Um, again, you know, as a way to kind of inspire people, um, to get help, particularly those, you know, who are black and who may suffer from OCD or any type of anxiety disorder to really, you know, hey, get the help. You know, it's it's OK. You know, um, you know, a lot of, you know, hey, most of us are dealing with something. So, you know, definitely, you know, definitely you're worth it and get the help that you need. So um, but I plan on making more videos. This is the first one and then I'll probably make, make another one um, to go even more in depth. But um, this is uh, phase one, and then, you know, I'll move on to phase two. So um, much love to you all. Again, hit me up, um, you know, if, um, you know, wanted to maybe learn more or even even about insomnia, because, you know, you know, by sheer virtue of me having sleep OCD, I learned a lot about insomnia. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but, you know, again, I'm, this is more so about OCD in particular. So hope all is well. Take care again. Um, be safe. Be well. Um, take care of yourself and um, much love.